Okay, so it now gives me a great privilege to reintroduce Dr. Raina Ogram, one of my senior research fellows. Um, I don't need to introduce her because I, she was introduced before. So over to Raina. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and again, if, you, if you're able to tweet, 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 please. Sorry, I just wanted to. Um, so thank you. Um, and um, this is building on the Older Women Living Alone project that I spoke about earlier. And I know some of you are new in the room, so if you've missed out, um, uh, I'll, we'll touch base on that. The first thing I did want to say is thank you to the women, the volunteers and the stakeholders who were involved um, to date and will be involved in the future, and to the funders felt and bequest who are managed by equity trustees. Again, we can't do any of this work without their help. So this is something I covered in my earlier talk, but for those of you that um, weren't here, um, uh, we worked with older women living by themselves in Melbourne um, and worked with them to figure out what was important for them and what services would help support them to stay independent and as well as possible. And they came up with these top three, one of which is the handy help just to read, um, just because you had a big lunch and I'm sure that all the blood is rushing to the brain, or to the stomach rather than the brain. So to help you remember, this was um, someone to come into the home uh, to do the tasks that other organisations don't do, but they themselves need a little bit of help in doing things like changing a light bulb and, and flipping mattresses and that kind of thing. And the volunteer drivers was going to the appointments, doing some sort of um, task, um, but wanting to do something along the way, like having a coffee, doing extra errands that aren't normally provided by current services, and exercise buddies, which is where we know as we get older, we need to keep active in order to stay active. And so it's having someone to jolly you along to actively encourage you to keep going. So each of these are a task, um, but uh, they, uh, want, they actually have a social component so that people that are helping the women do this um, chat, um, connect with people in a social way, so that it's actually an enjoyable experience. And this led us to propose a volunteer peer support approach to provide these as a sustainable way of actually um, putting these in place. And so um, the project that we were funded for um, is uh, in four parts. Arts and we were looking at first what's worked before and what's out there, um, building a service together to remain independent. Um, the third part is uh, building a plan to implement that service that's been um, put together because as you know, implementing something so it actually works is a bit of a battle. So this is something that we wanted to, to work with those people to do. And part four is actually trialling and evaluating the service and the project is running from July last, uh, last year until June next year. And so we've completed the first part and halfway through the second and I'll talk about them a bit and followed by what we plan to do. And so um, being um, in Brisbane, um, you're not aware of as much uh, in terms of Melbourne um, and we were, fun the Felton Bequest actually wanted something funded outside of metropolitan Melbourne. So they wanted something a bit of a distance. And whilst Mornington Peninsula is no, by no means rural or regional, um, uh, Bolton Clark and, um, and a, a, a group called Uniting Big Chaz both provide services out there and Uniting Big Chaz is, is a volunteer support service and so they already have networks out there so we collaborated with them and um, the Mornington Peninsula region is um, has an interesting it has pockets of great wealth like really great wealth and great hardship it's a real great disparity and so and with varied supports across the region so it's a good place to start so what have we done to date? So really the first part was looking at well what's already out there in terms of a peer support frameworks. And so we looked at the grey literature and also at partner organisations and what they've done and other organisations because we needed to use something as a base to build to co-design our framework with the older women and with the volunteers so that we can be sure that what we put together actually meets their needs. We also needed to map current services in the area because we want to make sure that we're not competing that we're actually support, um, doing something that, that actually um, supports or comp, uh, um, actually complements what's there. And the next step was to identify areas to implement the project. And so using Australian Bureau of Statistics, we identified areas where there were high numbers of older women living by themselves, as well as areas of low socioeconomic uh, and disadvantage. And that led us to three areas, um, Hastings, Dramana and Rosebud West, which, tend to be, which are fairly close, but are neglected areas. Um, very few services and they really need supports. And so um, this part that we've done is uh, working with women living by themselves, with volunteers and community stakeholders. So what we've done 
is we've, um, we're wanting to work with those individuals that will use the services and those that will actually provide the services so that we can draw from them what's important to them in terms of what does a volunteer look like, what do they need to be like, um, who would they be, how should the support be provided. And so we ended up going out trying to find, well, where could we find these people? So we went through asking the police actually have um, a group where they go out to seek people who are isolated and don't have connections to make sure they're okay. The council, uh, we've got health services, retirement villages, the local paper, radio, newsletters. So we went all out to try and find these people and got, and got a couple of groups together. And then the volunteers, we, we used those sources, but also the um, University of the Third Age, the, the local university where students have to actually provide some sort of volunteering as part of their coursework. And so we, we've approached them and also the media and similar to what we did for women and with the community service stakeholders because of um, us trying to find the women and the volunteers we've managed to develop networks with them and are inviting them with that stakeholder group so what we've done is we've had the, um, the sessions with the older women and they've come up with their ideas of what this looks like and we've gone through a couple of the volunteer sessions and we're working with the university students who are on placement now and they'll be coming back next week which will move on to the community service stakeholders the next stage is actually the nitty-gritty of how we can implement what these people come up with so that we can make sure that what's put in place actually works um, and meets the needs and also that we identify what matters to them so we can evaluate what's important for them for this to work so that um, yep. I'm getting low time now, so I'm getting under, feeling under pressure. Um, and we're going to implement Evaluate. So we're going to put this in place and we'll follow up um, for three months to see whether it does meet um, the women's needs, it meets the volunteers' needs, and it actually produces the effect that we're hoping. And so um, thank you. This is my team members. And that's, um, am I on time? <laughs>